Human scent tracking. We've all seen dogs use their sense of smell for scent tracking. Dogs can use their sense of smell for hunting, search and rescue, helping police find fugitives, finding drugs, finding bombs, and there even are dogs that are trained to smell money, pirated DVDs, and cancer. With all that dogs can do with their sense of smell, it begs the question, can we do the same? If you think that is impossible, then this video might shock you. The scent tracking arena is shown from above. The arena is 10 meters on a side with a 10 meter scent trail shown in white. For this demonstration, the trail is made of highly visible rope. During the actual experiment, the trail is not easily visible. The trail is composed of two straight segments connected by a 45 degree angle. The subject is outfitted with goggles, earmuffs, gloves, and knee pads to block non-olfactory input. The subject wears a data logging device and a backpack to record their sniffing. The nasal cannula used to measure sniffing is seen here. Here the subject is wearing nasal prisms to alter the spatial reach of their sniff. At the start of a trial, the subject is positioned facing the odor trail and has been instructed which direction to turn on encountering the trail. Beyond this initial instruction, the subject is given no further information about the path of the scent trail. An example tracking run is shown here at roughly 4x speed. That video you saw was not an isolated incident, or just one individual that has an exceptional sense of smell. Research has actually found that the majority of humans tested can use their sense of smell for scent tracking. In a research study, 21 out of 32 participants tested were able to follow a 10 meter trail when all of their senses besides their sense of smell was blocked out. So if we can use our sense of smell for scent tracking, why is it so underused, and why is our sense of smell so bad compared to other animals? One reason could be that as we evolved, our nose moved further from the ground. Anthropological evidence indicates that the dwindling size of the snout from primate to human allowed the eyes to move to the middle of the face to improve depth vision. During human evolution, the snout can be reduced in dimensions and complexity without compromising the ultimate amount of air that reached the nose. The reduced snout allowed the eyes to come forward and lie closer together to promote more effective stereoscopic vision. Thus, vision could become more dominant in humans without ultimately sacrificing the sense of smell. At the same time, as humans began to adopt an erect posture, the nose moved away from the ground where there are a lot of odors and there was less of a need for the sense of smell. Another reason is the lack of olfactory receptor genes. Recent genetic studies show a decline in the number of functional olfactory receptor genes from the evolution of primates to humans. The low number of functional olfactory receptor genes in humans compared with most other mammals is directly linked with the evolutionary decline in the human sense of smell. A third reason could be a simple lack of practice. We are so reliant on using our eyes and ears to navigate that we rarely need to navigate using our sense of smell. Researchers decided to put this theory to the test. They had four volunteers sent track three times a day for three days over a two week span. By the end of the two weeks, the four participants had significantly fewer variations from the trail and had more than doubled their speed. Further, they found that as the speed of the participants increased, so did their amount of sniffs, similar to how dogs sniff more as they go faster. So how exactly does this happen? When we navigate using our eyes and ears, we're able to do so because we have two sensory receivers receiving two different inputs. It is commonly believed that our nose cannot do the same thing because our two nostrils are located too closely together. However, this is completely false. 
Seen here is a photograph taken by a particle image velocimetry used to measure the velocity of neutrally buoyant particles in a cordial plane intersecting the human nose during sniffing. It shows that each nostril breathes in a different stream of air and each stream of air provides spatially distinct information. Seen here is a contour plot of the magnitude and direction of inspired air. In it, you can see that each nostril is receiving a completely different flow of information. Researchers decided to put this idea to the test and see if the spatial distinction of information received by each nostril was the true reason we could track using scent. They had subjects navigate the same 10 meter trail again, this time with one nostril being blocked. This time, only 36% of them could follow the trail as opposed to 66% when they were able to use both nostrils. The participants who were only able to use one nostril also showed a 26% reduction in speed. What does this mean about our sense of smell? All of this raises the question of whether our sense of smell is really that bad or is it simply not practiced enough? This makes you wonder if we practice our sense of smell more or if we not have as strong of other senses, how much better would this sense become? This also makes you wonder what other amazing things our senses could accomplish that we don't yet know about.